Greetings and welcome to the basement. This is my second video in my UI series. Previously, we had taken a look at absolute positioning, where both the size and the positioning of our UI elements were determined by absolute sizes and offsets, regardless of the size of the canvas. This text box here will not change its absolute offset from this anchor point. In this video, we're going to take a look at relative sizing and relative offsets. And the reason why we might want to do this is let's say I wanted to have a you know, fairly standard UI setup for a main menu. I'll have an image, a background image, and then maybe across the bottom here, I'll have things like you know new game, load, settings, and quit. So I'll have four buttons across the bottom. And I want those four buttons to always take up, relatively speaking, the same amount of size in the screen, regardless of what the user's uh, resolution settings are. It would be a scenario, a good scenario for doing relative positioning and sizing as opposed to absolute positioning and sizing. Now, before we get into using buttons, let's take just a quick look at relative positioning and sizing with a panel. So I'm going to come over here to my hierarchy. I'm going to add in a panel. And bam, I immediately get this like faded white thing just completely covering my entire screen. Well, almost my entire screen. There's actually little corners of blue there, but close enough. Um, it also is fading out my text. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, notice as opposed to, say, how our text has all of its little triangular points in a single point, the panel has little triangle pointers in the corners. What this is indicating is, okay, relatively speaking, to the size of the screen, here's where you should be anchored to. So I am saying... Well, you should be anchored to the four corners of the screen. Therefore, you're taking up all of the screen space. I can change this. Say maybe I wanted this to take up only 50%. You know, I wanted 25% borders all the way around. Well, I can drag these little white triangles. Now, with as close as they are to... Um, the resize dots for the rectangular transform tool, that actually can be a little bit tricky to actually click on the darn things. Because you notice right now I am on the rotation widget. So you have to be very careful about where you click. You notice as I'm dragging it, I get down towards the bottom of the screen there. Uh, percentages. So I can sort of manually drag this so that, okay, that says 25%. Drag this up carefully so it says 25%. Oops, but I drifted a little bit, so now that's 24%. This is good for sizing it. Like if I decide, okay, I want this to take up this much of my screen, manually positioning the anchor points works good in this scenario. So I can say, okay, yeah, I want it to, you know, match up what I've already put in. But in the case where I've got something very specific that I want, it's probably easier to manually adjust the anchors through this interface over here, where I can manually specify exactly where the starting and ending points are for my anchors. So my min X, I will put at, see around my microphone here. 0.25. My max X I will put at 0.75. Min Y I will put at 0.25 and max Y 0.75. That gives me a 25% boundary along my edges, meaning that 50% of the width and height is taken up in the center. Now notice as I'm moving these anchors, the actual image itself is not being updated. This is intentional and probably is what you want most of the time. You know, the Unity is assuming that I know 
that this is where I want this UI element to be and that this is the size I want it to be. And it's going to readjust its offsets so that it maintains the correct positioning with these anchor points. Now, since I want this to actually match up perfectly, I'm gonna go over to my rectangular transform tool here and I'm going to zero out these offsets. And yeah, now this box perfectly fits in the center. And if I come back over here, go back to free aspect and start abusing things again, you'll see that it perfectly maintains that relative sizing, 25%, 50%, 25%, regardless of the size of my viewport. Go through the various aspect ratios and you can see it change with it. So, I mean, at its core, that's relative positioning. You know, we change our anchor points to take up specific areas. Okay, so before we get into placing our buttons, let's just take a quick look at what's going on here with this overlap. Now, how Unity draws its canvas is it draws it in the order that it's listed in the hierarchy. So this text box is drawn first which means the panel is going to be drawn next on top of it. So that's why it is covering this up. You got two real ways that you can use to solve this. I can rearrange the order in the hierarchy. So since now the panel is first, the panel will be drawn, then the text. So now the text is on top. But let's say if you know I wanted this text to actually be like maybe centered on this panel. Well, at the moment, they're not linked, so I would want to make this a parent or make the text a child of panel. And, well, obviously, since it's drawing in the order it's listed in the hierarchy, a child is always going to be drawn on top of its parent. So text now will always be drawn on top of the parent. Also, notice that my anchor point is relative to my parent, not the entire canvas. UI element, the anchor points for UI element will always be relative to its parent UI element, not the top level canvas, unless the top level canvas does in fact happen to be the parent. So I can take this text box and I can change its positioning to be dead centered. And now, regardless of where I move this panel, that text is going to be dead center. All right, let's get rid of that panel. And let's just do a quick practical exercise of putting a series of buttons down across the bottom here. I drop in a button. And just real quick, buttons also use this parenting trick. So if you look at the button game object, at the top level, you have the image and the button components added onto your game object. And if you expand that out, you'll see a text game object, which has the text component, which consists of your label. And if you look at the anchor points, the anchor points for the text is saying, okay, I want to always take up 100% of the space that my parent is taking up, which is what you would want from a label. So, all right, so we're going to need four buttons across the bottom. And let's say that I'm going to want each button to take up, hmm, let's say 20% of the screen. So four buttons that gives takes up 80% of my width. And then I will have, you know, a few little spaces to fill in there. So I'm going to initially set this down here. And I'll just have the buttons all butted up against each other. So I'm going to need to set my anchor points up such that uh, I've got a 10% buffer on the left-hand edge. Once I get all the way over here, another 10% buffer, and then move the buttons over 20% each time. It sounds confusing. It really isn't. So I'm going to 
if it's not already expanded out, you'll need to expand out anchors. And what I'll do is I'm going to set this X min to 0.2 and my X max to 0.3. And then what to do with this Y value? Hmm. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do this in mixed mode. I'm going to leave my height fixed. So it'll always be the same height, regardless of screen size. It's just the width will vary. But I still need to get that down here. So this is, oh, I don't know, that looks maybe 3%-ish. 0.03. Okay, that's and then clear out. My left, right, and position Y. And there we go, I have got my button. You know, in this particular case, I most certainly do not want to clear out my height because, well, yeah, I can't, I can't see my button at that point, but maybe I will increase my height to 40. In which case, ooh, um, yeah, let's move that up a little bit. So let's say 4% on the Y value. Move that up a tad so it's not directly on the bottom of the screen. All right, so I have one button done. I'm gonna duplicate that, Control D. And then for this button, Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and change the text. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say this will be new game. And change the button label. Now, okay, so for this one, it ended at x.3. So this one needs to begin at x.3 and needs to end at x.5. Update my left and my right values. Let's pop that over nice and neat. I'm going to call this hack. If I can type correctly, that would be absolutely lovely. Button load game. Now, you don't obviously you don't need to put that BTN in there. That's just a habit that I have for naming things to be crystal clear on my UI as to whether or not something's a button or a text box. Load game. I don't have to do anything with my Y anchor points because that's already set and not going to change. Duplicate that. Rename this to him. Rename this to button options. And of course, update my text. Switch back to the button, and so the previous one ended at 0.5, so this one needs to start at 0.5 and end at 0.8. Update my left and right offsets. Oh, yes, not 0.8. It's like I'm looking at this and I'm like, you know, Sesame Street time. One of these things doesn't look like the others. And that's because, in fact, I should be moving this by 20%, not 30%. That should be 0.7. And, of course, I need to update my offset. There we go. That is better. And then, finally, I'm going to put in my quit button. So grab button options, duplicate it, rename it. Nope, no capital. Button quit. Update my text. And then update my button's position. And my mouse cursor is starting to get a little bit twitchy. So this is going to be starting at 0.7. It will end at 0.9, which leaves me that 10% boundary on the edge that I was wanting. It's nice when a plan comes together. Set off those offsets. And there we go. I now have a nice 
reasonable menu that's going to maintain its relative width regardless of how I have this. The height will always remain the same, as you can see as I go through and change this. I am hoping this is not trashing my recording. There we go. Now, there's one last trick that you can do with UI, and that is nest them inside of panels. So say I was create, if I wanted to create like a stat block for an IP RPG, instead of doing this kind of relative positioning just on the canvas, I might instead create a panel, which I'm not gonna go through the full steps because it's pretty much the same logic that we just did. We're just applying it to a panel image or some other subtype. So I could take this panel, define it relatively you know, I always want this panel positioned here, or I could even just simply leave the panel locked like this saying, okay, relative to the whole size of the screen, that's where I want the panel and its size, which as you can see does, it's a little bit weird, but you know, it works. But then I could add in UI elements to, into here and define them relatively inside of this panel. And it doesn't have to be panels. They're just a convenient way of doing this. The key thing is that you are methodical about your UI and you are thinking about its placement and you are thinking about your anchors. As long as you keep in mind those anchors, as long as you are setting them deliberately and with thought, the chances of your UI exploding under different resolutions it's pretty small. It can still happen. And to really ironclad against that, you need to deal with the canvas settings. And since this video is getting a little bit long in the tooth, we'll deal with that in another video. And so, until then, take care.